Welcome to the Pick Up The Flow show. I'm Selwa. And today my guest is uh, Hisham Akira Barucha. Hi, Hisham. How are you doing? <laughs> Good, and you? Good. Thanks yeah. for having me on. Yeah, I'm thank excited. you for being here. Of course. Um, before we start the, intro, uh, the uh, conversation, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, so I'm Hisham Akira Barucha, and I guess I've been in New York making stuff um, since or for 26 years now. And uh, yeah, I guess I kind of like moved here like uh, with music and visual art both in mind and have been able to somehow survive until now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's so fascinating. Like when you uh, meet people who have been here for so long and you've seen New York change and mm -hmm. um, but you're still here like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those oh. things where you get used to New York and you're like. You know, you look at, I mean, we've all had friends who like moved to LA at some yeah. point or like, you know, like moved back home or something like that. And then you're like, can I, could I do that? Or am I interested in that? Like, um, and you try, you know, I we, like me and my wife definitely like looked at LA like back when it was, you know, like before it really became like a, a, a thing. I mean, we were a, a little bit later, not like to say we were the first people to like think to move to LA or anything like that, but we looked at yeah. it and we we're like, no, it's not <laughs> for us, you know? yeah um and so i think it's just like your personality like i grew up in you know cities for most of my life so i feel like it was like i just like the access you know you have mm -hmm. public transit you could rely on to a certain yeah. degree and then you know you could get around and if you're somebody who is interested in seeing you know exhibitions or performances or you know you and you like the energy of of the city i mean you kind of can't be New York still, even though yeah. it's changed a lot. You know, there's like one thing that I thought of, like as mm -hmm. you know, during COVID, like I I was away with my wife. We like took our kid and you know out of out of town because we you know none of us knew mm -hmm. like a, what the protocol should be and how safe it was and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. I was in the suburbs of Atlanta and also in in Nashville, Tennessee, where my wife is from. Oh, nice. And um, but like when I it was and it was so. Trumpy and all this crazy stuff was happening with like you know Black Lives Matter and oh, you know yeah. like the you know and so like um like in the South it felt I felt unsafe you know because mm -hmm. as being a brown person or you know like it I was just you know I didn't know you know like I see people carrying around guns and like Whoa. Confederate flags and you know all this stuff so then when I came back to New York I felt so extremely safe. Like, um, and it was oh. funny to just sort, sort of hear the stories of people watching the news in New York, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> being like, oh, it's so crazy. <laughs> like, it, like, like, wow, well, why would anybody live there? It's the like, people are so violent and you come back and it's like, you know, everybody's <laughs> so supportive because they're, because this is a, like, it's like the, the melting pot of cultures and exactly. we have, and we have to get along because it's, there's no time mm -hmm. to bicker about being a different, you know, thing you know it's just like we all coexist because we have to i mean yeah if there were, if it was a little easier to live here yeah. i think people would have maybe more time to like point out issues you know and mm -hmm. of course there are, are there are all there will always be tension mm -hmm. between certain cultures but like um mm -hmm. but for the most part day to day like it's 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 good yeah know? so yeah that's it's, yeah yeah it's so true it's like what it makes new york actually good also like for your son to mm. grow up here and be part of like this like energy yeah it's such a it's so important totally yeah i'm like i definitely think that's a cool thing that you know you know we don't know what's going to happen with the planet these days so we yeah. like uh as we're talking about so we'll we'll see what happens in the future but for i like that there's like a good chunk of his life where new york is where he was born and you know mm -hmm. he he's grown up seeing all these different cultures and and that's like super important to me to for him to feel this like beauty and evenness in all these people, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, like, cause I, you know, like in my childhood, I was in Japan, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, if you stood out, you sort of felt weird. It's, you know, I, I think like, a, just like a monoculture versus like a, you know, like that's one good thing about, you know, I guess America, but it, you know, specifically New York is just, that that because everybody came here to sort of like try to figure out how to make a living for mm. to send money home or you know I guess this is like 
Mm -hmm. just my image of of new york and just seeing how many different types of immigrants are here working Mm -hmm. like i just appreciate the the drive that they have to like come here and survive here Mm -hmm. um to hopefully help their families and stuff and for me it was more just like you know if i if i stayed in tokyo Mm -hmm. then i feel like i I felt like i I couldn't connect to as many people creatively Mm -hmm. like because it's it is still island culture and you know it it it's a little more difficult to sort of like i mean maybe this was instilled by my mother too where she was like you know maybe being somewhere like a you know you could say you're a new york artist you know yeah. um and so that's like maybe you know some like a like some something that came from my mother you know in terms of just like think about where you're going to live and Mm-hmm. One thing she said, I remember that I think was a good thing was like, you know, because we moved around a lot in our lives, like a, the whole family. Um, she was like, stay put, like stay yeah. in one place and like get some roots because mm-hmm. as you see, it's hard for me to make a living because we made a lot of, we moved around a lot, you know, mm. so, so, you know, coming back to, for her, um, you know, like when we were back in Japan, it was harder her, for her to make a living because she had lost a lot of the connections with people that were working because she was a mother, you know, mm-hmm. and so and, you know, could, wasn't doing the same type of work. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, uh, you know, she had to deal with that. And, you know, so I like I guess coming back to the point of just like like a, I think a, a lot of what I experience and what I pay attention to is just like how hard immigrants are working here. Yeah. You know? And I think it's beautiful. You know? It's so true. And it adds like this kind of community, like, like, you know, I mean, you've seen gentrification in this city, Yeah. but like when you go to like, uh, you know, neighborhoods where you see communities who yeah. have been there for so long, yeah. you see this like empathy and people helping each other. Yeah. That is so important. Yeah. You know, and, totally. um, yeah, we have to to preserve it, even if it's through our like music networks yeah. or community. So, yeah. yeah, everyone can help each other if they. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I think it's just like, uh, especially with what's going on on the planet right now, like people are really, you know, trying to use their creative, you know, I guess communities to 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 communicate, you know, the importance of of. I guess, you know, keeping your community, like showing your community that you, you care and that you care about other communities. Mm-hmm. And uh, that kind of support has been so beautiful recently. And um, I'm so glad that people are out there, you know, trying to help each other out. Cause mm-hmm. I think it's like, we've all lost like a, you know, faith in, you know, the, the governments that, you know, that, that, you know, are, are just looking at this sort of like, big picture and we're just like pawns on the yeah. chessboard you know it's mm-hmm. just like we're, we we don't matter at a, this really small scale and mm-hmm. they're just making these big moves that are that will you know benefit the people who already have money yeah like, well, okay like but we if we don't yeah if we just keep let it letting it go it's just you know we can they'll just keep taking advantage so yeah so to go back to your childhood, you were born in Niigata and and then you moved to Tokyo mm-hmm. and then you moved to America and then you went back for high school mm-hmm. in Tokyo. Uh, can you talk uh, a bit about your, we have some photos, so maybe we can show um, yeah. some photos and if you can talk about it. Yeah, this is like a photo, I, I think it was before we were born, um, oh, but wow. yeah, it's my father on the Staten Island Ferry. And then, you know, I, I mean, this photo was just so powerful to see, mm. you know, especially after 9-11 where you're like, that's so crazy. But it's just, a, you know, it's just a Asian with an American dream, you know, that's really um, what it is. Like I had this photo that I, 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 I used this like photo for the, my first solo, uh, solo release under the name Yokubari mm-hmm. that came out on China Bot. Um, but like, um, but I use it because it was just, you know, I wanted to sort of like talk about that, the, this idea that I've just been like already going on about, which is just like, you know, immigrant life and, you know, these really fascinating stories that all these people have to try to get to the West, this idea mm. of the West, you know, the, the very idealized image of it. Um, and so, 
yeah, this, you know, like a, like a, you know, a, 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 South, a South Asian, like Muslim, um, you know, in front of these towers, like with so much hope. And then, you know, then everything mm -hmm. changes. Well, you know, like there was a big change after like a 9-11 in terms of like, you know, people looking at Muslims. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's just, a, I just trip out on it, you know, like that, that, like uh, we actually like uh, first moved to Canada um oh yeah uh to toronto mm -hmm. and then it was you know like the both my parents had the you know sort of american dream sort of thing and then you know i think they they always said that it was like felt safer to enter in toronto or in canada mm -hmm. so that was like an image um and i think that you know sort of holds up with other when i talk to people who um who stayed in canada after that but we eventually moved to California after that, lived in LA um, and then San Diego after that. Um, yeah, so yeah, that, I guess, you know, there's there's all kinds of stories there, but there's, a, do you have the photo of uh, me, me and my mother? Um, uh, like yeah. A, Cause that, I was just thinking about that. Oh, okay. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, that, yeah, so that, this is like a- oh, sorry. No, that's okay. That's, that's a good one too. Like just to, you know, like you see, my, you know, my, like, uh, you know, like, I guess, full-blooded Japanese mother, you know, with my father. This is in Niigata, like, right after I was born. So I'm on the left in the purple kimono. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah, and then that my older brother is on the right. But I wore that kimono on the right, like, uh, later when I was bigger. Oh, I should have scanned that photo, too. But, like, wow. um, and then um, my son wore it the other day, like, uh, oh. <laughs> two days ago for you know like he had like a cultural day um on like on the snow day Whoa, um, like they, so nice. they just shared cultural things and he wore the kimono he was like oh my dad wore it so, <laughs> so yeah it's a it's cool but yeah this is at my gr grandmother's house in Niigata and like uh, I got to take my wife before my both my grandparents passed to this house and so that was cool we have a photo there Whoa, but yeah, like, nice. uh, like, uh, but yeah, there's like a, there's one photo of me and my mother, like, uh, on the, like, a, this is me as a teenager. Oh, sorry. oh, this one. That's okay. Um, but this, I think this is on the way to, uh, to Toronto. So that's why it was like, you know, the first, you know, first time riding an airplane at two. Wow. So yeah, from two to six, I was in Toronto. So that just like, this just like meant, meant something to me. Cause just the imagining, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. this mixed culture like a you know family in japan like moving to moving to america and they don't have any you know actual connection or moving out west and they're not being any like real connection to it you know and just imagining how that felt for them mm. um yeah but like toronto was interesting because it was like a there was a big japanese cult, uh you know community already and we you know all my childhood friends from toronto um are all japanese uh canadians stayed oh, wow, all, nice. a lot and i think all of them stayed um none of them moved back to japan so yeah like a, it's clearly like a you know so that was interesting when like i went back last year my aunt now lives there um on my you know south asian side so i got to see her um and and then see my my uh japanese my uh japanese friends uh too but mm -hmm. you know english is a little easier for them but yeah and there's this photo yeah that was just like a, another example of just like uh just being in being in the west like uh you know as kids and just imagining you mm -hmm. know like what it's like like i i just thought that was a a cool photo to see because i hadn't i had just like i was telling you earlier but mm -hmm. i rediscovered all my childhood photos um that were stored away in like a, a house in the countryside in japan um and so a lot of these photos like uh i i'd never seen before but i was able to sort of like uncover a lot of um things so they just you know they didn't really bring back memories like because it's so long ago but they you know they were just it was just wild to see and so in this photo, this is at a wedding and my father is on the, on the far right. Mm. Yeah. So it was just, you know, sort of like, a wanted to share this as an example of, you know, just, um, where, where my family is from, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know. So, it, and you and your dad. Yeah. So um, this is probably, I think it's in, I think it's in Canada, but I could be wrong. 
But I was like, is there a Disneyland in Canada? <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, do, do you, what, what were your aspirations at the time? Like, do you remember what did you like and what made you happy as a kid? Yeah, I, it's... Yeah, I was thinking, because now that I, uh, I've been a f father for a little while, my kid is now six, but I remember like my memory starting as a kid around when I was four. And so, I mean, I always liked music and luckily my dad was really into music. Like, oh, wow. yeah, like um, again, there's like so many pictures and memories that it's hard to sort of share everything. But uh, there, there's a picture of my father playing in a band like from... I think it looked like it was in the in this in the late 60s or something like that and so and i think he played bass in that band and i played bass as my first sort of instrument before i started playing drums that's why the, like that childhood picture of me or the, the oh, picture yeah, of me oh yeah that's like a funny go one back. yeah but I, yeah that was one another one of the photos that i rediscovered um um as a i think like my first girlfriend ever like i took that picture but yeah like um what? But uh, oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, the the Jane's Addiction T-shirt and the like, <laughs> Fishbone and Nirvana and like a Dinosaur Junior pictures in the background, like snowboarding. That was totally me, just like, yeah. <laughs> just so, like really into music and like, uh, yeah. So did you have like a memory at that at this time? Like, do you remember what you were into, like musically or? Yeah, I mean, I really have always been like a wear it on the sleeve type of kid. So like mm -hmm. I just, you know, as you can see with my Jane's Addiction t-shirt, it was like back then it was alternative rock, you know? Um, but it was like post, like a, as a kid, you know, my dad was really into music. So he'd play us like Beatles and stuff and like Western stuff. He was really into Elvis. That's why in the picture he has like the big chops, you know? Uh Oh, yeah. Like uh, so, he had those like all through the '70s, like it, like and and they got shor shorter in the '80s, but they're still pretty big. And um, but uh, yeah, like a and he was like an audiophile. I remember as a kid, he had like like this. It would be like you know, I guess cassette reel to reel like mm -hmm. machines, and him and his friends would seem like just like be like getting into hi-fi music and or how to how to listen to hi-fi stuff. And so that I have those childhood memories. And then he had a really terrible guitar that I remember like inheriting that ended up just throwing away because I was like, this is just literally garbage. Um, it just what it, it was impossible to play. But he liked, you know, playing string instruments and like rock music, I think, like uh, and classical music and that kind of thing. So those are like childhood memories. I remember being into like Pink Lady, which is like a Japanese like idol group, like a, a duo. So that was like, you know, like 70s. Um, And then like in high school or or I guess like through skateboarding, like I got into like punk and like metal, you mm -hmm. know, um, like me and my brother were just like really into skateboarding, like, um, you know, when we we're really young or, or started getting into it. And then, you know, the like the and, and at this point we we're in San Diego. So in San Diego, it was just like suburban life, like, you know, kind of like the, the stereotypical like 80s, like uh, upbringing of like getting like stealing wood from construction sites and building <laughs> ramps and you know Whoa. like um and then there's like the neighborhood like quote unquote skin like skinhead because he was jewish but like was just like anti like a uh, like a bourgeois you know he was just like flick off like rich people and stuff Whoa. and then but like we learned about like hardcore punk from him and because we were just like into we just listened to whatever we saw in like skate contest videos. It'd mm -hmm. be like, oh, there's GBH is on. We'll listen to GBH or Metallica. We'll listen to Metallica. And then that's how we heard all the music. And then that kind of extended into like that picture because it was like this one, there's a one specific like GNS skateboards like video where there's this newer street style sort of coming up. Like mm -hmm. um, people are doing more like complicated tricks and the first song is like a dinosaur junior song on it. And I was like, what's this? This Whoa. sounds cool. Like it's, you know, not like as heavy, but I like it. And mm -hmm. then, so I got into like, in, you know, the indie rock stuff, I guess, like, you know, hearing Sebado and then, you know, but then there was like in between that, this, the earlier ski videos still had like black flag and, you know, mm -hmm. it was like crossover, like, like metal hardcore crossover bands and like, like SST records, like, weird like weird you know really weird crossover bands were happening so all that stuff sort of like influenced me and then then i started playing in bands once like we were back in japan so 
Oh wow! So, so yeah. that, that is so you didn't do it in the U.S. Or? Yeah, we were like, like I was like I started playing bass like maybe when I was like at the end of seventh grade or mm -hmm. um, I think, and then my brother uh, w like uh, also played bass, so we just like shared a bass basically, and like like I you know I just try to do whatever my older brother wanted to do. So, mm -hmm. but then yeah, well, once once we moved back to Japan, mm -hmm. like um, it was you know then then there was. I guess like I just just like instruments were just much easier for me to play do than skateboarding mm -hmm. actually I was I always liked skateboarding but I couldn't get good enough to be sponsored you know I was mm -hmm. it was just it was still just a hobby but with instruments I knew I just I I just I remember having this instinct with certain things like mm -hmm. oh I could get better at this I'm gonna just keep doing it I want to see where I can go you know and so just like I think like um to uh, that this is one thing i i think about when i'm talking to my kid is like you know just like I, or when i'm yeah i'll just be like if you have a gut instinct about something just mm -hmm. follow it because yeah. it's just like it'll lead you somewhere exactly and you could decide if you want to keep going with it or not like, and, and i feel like it's so important to uh, tell him that because like i feel like when you're a kid that's when the gut feeling get you know gets formed mm -hmm. and we and that's when we need to like trust th that gut feeling yeah. Because if you have like a parent that always like kills your dreams, yeah. then you kind of like as an adult you're more detached. Totally, yeah. So yeah, that's so true. That's such an important point. And also, so how did you uh, uh, teach yourself like uh, drums and? Right, I'm like totally self-taught with all like Everything. my instruments. Like, I mean, I I was terrible at piano. I definitely did the like uh, you know Asian parents doing the you know making your kids do piano thing, but like they were not like extra strict about that. I think mainly because my brother, older brother, was clearly clearly good at that. Mm -hmm. I started doing clarinet and I liked it, but then like I you know like when I was doing that, my dad passed. So then it was like, I just like was going to, you know, it was just like this weird sort of zone of what are we going to do like mm -hmm. with the family. Um, but like uh, after, you know, like learning the clarinet and getting into metal, like I, 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 I was just like, a, you know, like I saw the Metallica Cliff and Wall video. This is like a, mm -hmm. back then it was like, you know, the VHS video that, you know, was sort of making the rounds and for the kids that were, sort of slightly outsiders mm -hmm. um and we like my brother and i would just like watch that religiously and then we're like we're gonna play bass because cliff burton is <laughs> amazing so that yeah nice. so we started playing bass because of that but like um but i would just like um you know we didn't even have cable mm -hmm. um at, at my house so we just i would have friends like tape there's a show called headbangers ball and we just like get i'd get a friend to record it for me and then I'd just watch that video over and over. But like, um, and then I'd, what I would do is I would play it and just like learn the songs by, by listening and playing along. So I'd be like, oh, this is the second fret, I think. And then, mm -hmm. and then I just like kept doing that until I could just like learn things. And I, just, I think I just, my mom like uh, will still say to this day that I have a good ear. And that's mm -hmm. because I, I could just memorize, memorize music Whoa. and just like figure it out. Whoa. So... That's how I learned like all of my, uh, like all guitar and bass stuff. There's no, like, I didn't even, there is still like back then, like tablature and stuff wasn't as available. You know, I just mm -hmm. like happened to, I think it was also faster for me because I could just like memorize a part, press pause on the cassette player <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> yeah. the CD player. And then like, a, you know, like try to play it and then, and then see if I did it right. And then I just keep doing that until I could play. And then, but I was obsessed with playing bass Whoa. and guitar i just that's all i would do i'd come home i'd play it till i fell asleep i remember like falling asleep on like my guitar or like my bass and you know waking up and just playing <laughs> and and then like um you know and like the only because i wasn't really like a good at sports and stuff i like uh um i would uh in Japan, they have like school festivals like and you can they invite people to come and you know like the um the kids like like they give the kids jobs like okay you guys are gonna have a restaurant and you're gonna you, oh, you know okay. so you do like these <laughs> booths you know um nice. and like uh but they would also have like bands could play so that was mm -hmm. like a, a cool thing about my high school is like they they had like 
somebody in the school must have had like like music because there was like a room where they always had like an amp and a drum kit oh, or, wow, and nice. so we could practice at school as long as it was like for the school festival um so yeah like um so that's like those are the first bands that i play played and were just like practicing at my high like junior high school um wow. you know trying to cover like metallica songs and stuff like <laughs> that yeah nice so and then after that you moved to uh the u.s Okay. So yeah, like it, yeah. So junior high and high school, I was in Japan, and then like uh, yeah, this I was studying to go to Japanese visual art school um, by doing like after school cram schools. Um, mm -hmm. So in Japan, like if you're gonna go, go to a Japanese art school, you need to be able to draw real realistic pencil drawings. Whoa. Um, it's a, just like a really rigid sort of like test system. I don't know if it's. I assume that it's still the same, but like. Um, And then if you wanted to go into like, say, graphic design or something, you had to do like a flat design, like two dimensional design, like course. And you had to be able to do like a specific things that like mm -hmm. told them that you were serious about this. But then while I was doing this, I uh, realized that you can take classes outside of the department mm -hmm. that you were going to. So I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to try all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So then I had like a a cool English teacher um, at my school that was younger who lived in New York or who had eventually moved back to New York. Um, but but he, I asked him about East Coast art schools because I was in, um, uh, because I lived in California. Like when I was a kid, I was like, I want to try something different. Mm -hmm. So I guess like a, to my credit, I was adventurous, I think from a young age to Whoa. just go places and see new things as much as I could. Because that's like also why So, so this English teacher told me about East Coast schools like Parsons and mm -hmm. RISD. Mm -hmm. But then when I, so I had like a, I had the opportunity to come and look at the, the go to the colleges like, a, and like a, it was, that was amazing because it was the early 90s. It's like 93. Oh, and, um, nice. And so like, uh, I remember coming and like staying with like, a, we had like a, one of my high school friends. Oh no, the first, the, that teacher had moved back and was, you know, like, a wasn't working in Japan anymore. Mm -hmm. And like, he invited me to like stay at his place, but it was just, a, a, it was amazing. Um, it was on Fort, it's like the building, it's this triangular building that's now right across the street from like the Apple store, like on, like off of 14th street. Like there's like eighth Ave, is that eighth or ninth? Like, oh yeah, the triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, they have like a cafe or something, yeah. like chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So that building, Like that's where he lived. There's like a loft on the top floor of that building. Oh, nice. Back then, but then, but basically, it was like pitch black. You know, it was like a, you know, I remember coming like coming to New York, Whoa. totally nervous <laughs> in a cab from the airport. You know, with the suitcase, and it's like dark. There's Whoa. like a couple lights on, you know, and then like I'm trying to get into the building, and I don't know, and I open like a basement door, and I, I don't know how I figured it out, but I remember being like, okay, this is a sex club. Like I, I'm not meant to be in here. Damn. I came out oh. and like um, called him from a payphone. He was like, "Oh, you got to get buzzed in." So I like buzzed in, um, and like uh, it was just wild. Like a, you know, like a just being in a like a that was like you know, the, but that those are like early memories. And then I remember going to like I think CMJ and stuff where it was happening, um, and so I got to like go see like Nirvana and Melvin's Whoa. and all these bands. I, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I got to see Nirvana as a kid in Japan too, but like, um, but to see them in America, it was just like, you know, the mosh pit was way more crazy, you know, just like mm. things like, you know, but like, so those were like good memories of, of like coming to America. And then like, basically like on that trip, I went to see Parsons, but it seemed a little too similar to Tokyo. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to, I, I decided to um, like check out Rhode Island and it was just so beautiful there. And I mm -hmm. like, uh, I had this image of like, as a kid, I was really into watching films like, uh, and um, I remember like Dead Poet Society, like there's this movie, Robin Williams movie, but it had like this, like to sort of like, um you know like ivy league college sort yeah, of like aesthetic. Yeah, the aste yeah yeah i see what you mean and so like i saw that <laughs> when i got there so i was like oh it feels like yeah. this is will be a college experience yeah. you know and it was that you know um so but so basically like i went to see RISD, 
and got in and and that was that was it but mm -hmm. yeah but that all led into like how i ended up being able to do the music and the visual art together because um because i wanted to do that you know i would like m my mother came from a visual art background so she was like music won't make any money you know like just parent you know mm -hmm. like but like visual art, i think like there's something there and i was like thank <laughs> god my mom is like at least yeah. like open-minded in that way well, but um but you know talking heads had gone there so i was like oh maybe there's something there and mm -hmm. then it just like all the providence sort of music stuff was just happened to be starting like when or like was really sort of kicking off like um so it yeah. like worked out yeah at that time i mean you were like at a really crucial time because like like i think um v veronica vasica was yeah, also totally. in your yeah class and also you you were part of lightning bolt can you talk about like uh those connection happen connections happening yeah. as you're living life but you're not thinking about that like you're living history like yeah totally. it was such a unique time yeah. that like it, you cannot really live right yeah. now you know yeah yeah no it's uh, i think it's one of those things i tell this to like like my younger friends who you know like you know saw like the providence stuff coming up and or when they were younger those were the things that really made a mark when these bands were like lightning bolt and you like know these yeah. yeah these bands were touring they're like what was it like back then but you know <laughs> we're just i mean we we're just living it just happened to be like that we we're you know these people just happened to be there at, at, at like kind of right place right time to yeah. sort of thing but veronica i remember meeting like in a photo class and um and she would like i would play her like japanese noise stuff and then she was like you like have you heard throbbing gristle i have like this video of throbbing gristle like you want to see you know watching it in the dorms Whoa. you know like um, <laughs> things like that where you're nice. like and then you know she was into slint then so she played me slint and then like just like you know everybody just riffing off of each other mm -hmm. like i had like a I, had a, a, I would wear, you know, like, a, as I was saying before, I'd always wear like my interests on my sleeve. So I'd always have all these band t-shirts mm -hmm. and I had like a boredom's t-shirt on because I was a fan as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and like, uh, you know, the like some like there was like Brian Tippendale from Lightning Bolt, like maybe they had just started, they had been started playing and this guy, Matt Brinkman, were doing this thing. Oh, called, wow. Yeah. So they were doing this yeah. thing called marching band. Um, but it was like a totally wacky marching band. So they'd like all dress up in costumes like this crew and they'd do a marching band. Whoa. But it'd be like late <laughs> at night in the Providence streets and just trying to weird people out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that was like a whole, that was kind of like the whole ethos was like, we're all just trying to out weird each other, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, what? Oh, you like you thought of that? Like, let me do this. And <laughs> then, so that like, just like, I feel like that music scene kind of came from that. I mean, I definitely mm -hmm. brought the Japanese experimental music thing yeah. in because i was like you know after sort of like the indie phase i started to, you know i saw like the like a pivotal show was like seeing um i from boredoms do a band called concrete octopus and um that was like a hardcore band that he played in but he still performed like really crazy mm -hmm. and then when i saw him sort of coming out of the audience like screaming with his knit hat over his face like without even a mic you know i was like what's this well, you know and then and then I was like, this is maybe cooler than Helmet, you know, like, because they were opening for Helmet. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, like, um, but, and then my friends were like, oh, they, they, they have this other band, Boredoms, check this out. And then we're like, holy crap, like, the artwork is amazing. Like, this, this is so insane. Like, what is this? So oh. that was like my entry point into like experimental music. And there's some also like, mm -hmm like uh, bands that were doing like more effects and like I heard Ruins back then and like, you know, there was like these sort of like m more out there bands that were playing like real time. So mm -hmm. I just go, I started just going to see those shows. I remember mm -hmm. seeing like, I don't know if it was when I was already at RISD, but seeing like Mel Banana play like a set with Merz Bow and just like, Whoa. and I was seeing like, you know, these, there's this like amazing club called 20,000 Volts um, in Koenji. And that was like, the spot to see your noise show because they had this crazy sound system mm -hmm. built in this really tiny room so it was like the loudest thing ever and mm -hmm. i remember just going with earplugs but then you could stand right in front of this these this wall of speakers and it would just blow your uh, your clothes you know and i just like that was my entry point for set like just physical sound you mm -hmm. know like high volume like intensity and so 
I think I just, my intensity was already there as a kid and that, that sort of, I was bringing that experience to Providence, you know? Mm -hmm. So then when I started jamming with people, I was doing like, I was really already into like, like pedals and was doing feedback, like mm -hmm. loops and just doing all kinds of effects with vocals mm -hmm. and in high school bands and stuff. So then I was just doing that in Providence, like jamming with people and they're like, you should play, like you, you should jam with Brian and Brian, they have this band Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of like how that happened. Like I started doing vocals for Lightning Bolt. Um, and like back then it seemed like a long time, but it, I was only really in the band for like a year and a half. Cause I mean, four years at college mm -hmm. felt like a long time, but, but yeah, like that's sort of like how, how that started. And, and yeah. then you started Black Dice. And yeah. you, you added that no experimental noise kind of sight that like you... Yeah, so that, like the beginning of Black Dice is interesting because like, uh, like, I, I, like once I left Lightning Bolt, mm -hmm. like the funny, like uh, this is too good of a story to not talk about, but like uh, I, I basically like was, was learning about like synth stuff without really knowing how it really worked. So I remember mm -hmm. like going to like, uh, I had this vision of like, crazy synth sounds and i remember going to like a pond like a music store and seeing like an arp you Whoa. know and being like i don't know how to use this i wish i could understand it you know but i got like something that was easier it was like this korg synth and i was trying nice. to do like i was doing like noise stuff on it but that drew that that was my out like uh, there were like no synths in the band you know so i got kicked out of that um, band for like trying like synth stuff uh, so that, i think that was funny it's a good mm -hmm. story but like um but yeah so i was like always trying to change things and like lightning bolt is that's their thing they clearly still do that music and mm -hmm. you know i wasn't meant to be in the band forever because i was always trying to change mm -hmm. and so like um but yeah like i played in different bands with different friends and then mm -hmm. like basically like um bjorn um was was the same year and we we're all friends like bjorn and sebastian or bjorn copeland and sebastian blank was the old bassist Mm -hmm. for Black Dice and er Eric uh, Bjorn's younger brother would come to Providence and they'd jam and Brian Gibson um, from Lightning Bolt was who's the bassist was playing drums with them mm -hmm. and um, and so like uh, that like that the, that was called Spit on Your Corpse and they put on oh. uh, they put out one cassette of that name and then like um so that was more like a hardcore punk band. So mm -hmm. like what was happening in Providence was like a noise, like all this no uh, n noise rock stuff was mm -hmm. happening. So like Bjorn and them's idea was like to do something that was punk against that, which is a little more structured. Mm -hmm. um, so they were playing, but like working with Brian or playing with Brian wasn't working out because he was like already busy with Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. And like, um, and so they're like, you want to play drums like in this band? Cause I'd started mm -hmm. playing drums in bands just in college. So I didn't mm -hmm. really learn how to play drums until I like moved to the States. I always wanted to, but in Japan, there's no space, you know. Mm, and There's the sound, like, like you have, is it hard to, like, can you play music loud in your house in Japan? No, no absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Oh. So you like the Japanese system is like, there are all these rental spaces um, for, for just practice, band, pra brand, band practice rooms. Oh, and nice. they're like soundproofed and, but, you know, it costs a decent amount of money, you know, mm -hmm. like so to rent it for an hour. Like back then, you know, it was much cheaper, but now I'm sure it's quite a bit more. But anyways, I get to like jam a little bit like on the drums then. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was never good enough to be a drummer in a band. And then I started drumming in certain like, uh, you know, bands like uh, in college, but just, you know, a couple songs. Mm -hmm. But then Black Dice, like those guys were the first ones that were like, you could, you, why don't you drum in the band? And I was terrible. Um, but, but, uh, you know, like didn't know how to use my body, but eventually it took years, I think, but like, I got a little better at like doing it. Um, and I was always later jealous of people who grew up playing since they were children and stuff, you mm. know, got the lessons and stuff. But, mm. um, I was thinking about this with like, uh, some animators I met the other day and like, um, one of them, one of these animators was like, I grew up like doing it so much that I can't get out of how I do the animation. Yes yeah and so i think that's the same with like you know like a musicianship or anything yeah. like a, if you come in with a like with a naive mind sometimes it makes you more cr creative you exactly yeah. and also i feel like also like who you were as a kid 
you know, and all the hardships you lived in your life and then coming to the US by mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. And I feel like it has like this trend mm -hmm. that can be like we can see it through like your visual art, your music. Like it's not like because people want to box you into one thing, but the fact that like you're always curious about new things and experimenting and going forward is yeah. actually like it should be praised. You know what I mean? Like I feel like even now people want you to be one thing. And it's so annoying that like um yeah, we have to be free. We have to be we have to let our creativity just like yeah, follow the intuition and just experiment with new tools and just keep that going. Yeah. Instead of just doing one thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's what I like about what you do too, because you're clearly uh, not that you know, like uh like uh my yeah, my band my bandmate Nikos and Kill Alters is always like you're polymath. And then I didn't didn't really like know about that like um like term until much later but then then it was it's good like sometimes to have these little definitions because yeah. then because then you're like oh i have friends who are like that too you yeah know, like, exactly you know, yeah and you and you know yeah i just can't i, I don't know i think this uh, the curiosity of like understanding systems yeah and of, of creation and learning things and that's i mean i think if you're somebody i mean you're doing this this these interviews like, because you're interested in <laughs> and yeah. all these different people and how they think right so yeah. you're interested in the systems that they're how they go to how they got from point a to point b and that mm -hmm. that shows a genuine excitement of uh of being interested in life the process of life i think oh, and that's okay. i think uh, i think that's like a, a really that, that's why i i i, I think as you're saying we shouldn't mm -hmm. be shunned for being in, interested and and maybe capable of of mm -hmm. uh, having like creative outputs and interests that that don't stem from one salt one specific practice you know yeah that's a that's a tough one i think like for a lot of people to understand um and you know like there there's some there's pros and cons i think to it mm -hmm. um later in life i feel like i feel but you know but but i think it's just like you can't really if that's who you are you can't really you can't fake mm -hmm. you know becoming that one thing you know like I'm not just a drummer. I'm more of a musician that you just happens to be decent at the drums. And then I could do, but, I, but like, you know, I, I feel like it's, I don't really even consider myself any of the things that I do, you know? Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. And also I remember long time ago, I saw you play like drums with like drum sensors. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. That, like you're always thinking of like ways to like, push things and experiment with sound yeah and then you use drums as a tool yeah totally. um but yeah i'm curious about so you moved like after providence you moved to new york mm -hmm. uh, in 98 yeah so like uh quickly like uh i'm curious about like how you saw the artistic scene change right. like compared to now and like uh yeah. Yeah, I guess like back then, like I really was pretty naive about a lot of things in terms of like making a living, you know, from like creative stuff. And I didn't really know that, you know, like being born American and having family here and getting help financially sometimes was mm -hmm. like, like such a part of like, a, like living here. I, 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 I didn't understand how, how, why my struggle was what much harder, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause I remember being like, I can't pay rent mm -hmm. and call, like calling my mom and she's like, dude, I can't help you. Like you're on your own, like, you know, and then like seeing And you're an immigrant, you cannot work. That's the thing. Like yeah. when you're a student. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, like luckily I could like in, in college I would do is like some like a teacher's assistant stuff, but I had a green card already. Mm -hmm. oh, no. So like I had a green card, like since I was a kid and so that was the whole thing that saved me actually. Like, um, that would have been, I would, I mean, I don't even know what I would have done. I, I might've had to have moved, moved back to Japan or something or get mm -hmm. a full-time job. Mm -hmm. But I was always doing like assistant, like kind of like work for artists and photographers and stuff. I went to school and majored in photography at school mm -hmm. and did a lot of photo and video. And then like I started making all the other visual stuff because I couldn't afford the film. And well, you know, back then it was still only film. So like, um, I couldn't, uh, afford processing or like, you know, I didn't have a good setup for doing the black and white to keep the temperature right. And it just seemed like such a hassle to like, 
you know, I'd have to like, like barely have any money and then go to a dark room and like mm. waste a bunch of time, like not even getting the print that I needed. And, but like, um, so I started making like collage stuff because of that. Mm. And like, um, like my bandmate or like Buren was, uh, Buren was already doing collage stuff. So, and you know, it was the cheapest thing you could do. Cause I could go to the strand bookstore and go to the dollar bin and just like nice, buy yeah. books. And you know, that's like what, that's literally what I did. Yeah. and like find magazines and stuff so yeah like that's sort of like how the different like going from like a straight kind of photography like idea like mm -hmm. shifted i also i mean i was i was still doing some i was doing photography like um like a a few like maybe a couple years after i graduated with like older Japanese friends that I had who are art directors that were like okay you can you can do this like why don't we hire you for we're going to come to New York and you have to photograph these like New York scenes, you know, with like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, I mean, not like high fashion, but like clothing stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, like streetwear things. So I would do that. Um, so that, yeah, just like cobbled together how to, how to make a living through just like having to sort of survive through survive, it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a necessity. It was like a necessity, but at the same time you had your music practice. Mm -hmm. So how, like, uh, do you feel like both influence each other at that time in New York? Yeah, absolutely. The thing, the coolest thing about New York, I feel like I remember like moving to New York and like Black Dice starting to play shows was just that, you know, all different creators were coming to the parties and or shows, you mm -hmm. know, like um, I remember, you know, yeah, just like all the, you know, because people want moved to New York after art school, like to follow the career, you know, so meet all these cool visual artists that, you know, Williamsburg was still really just all yeah. lofts and, you know, like, um, it was pretty gritty and, you know, you could, we had a practice space like, um, you know, on the South side and, you know, it was just like, a like people were just doing DIY shows and stuff. And then we started playing in the city too. And specifically, um, um, uh, the cooler was this, this venue that we play in the, in the West village. And, mm -hmm that's you know we'd play with like you know no, noise bands or just our friends bands and stuff but like i remember one show where like uh like the first show where i met like chloe savini and um like i don't know if leo i don't think leo fitzpatrick was there but it was like mm -hmm. these people that i knew of like as new york you know sort of yeah. staples to kids you know <laughs> like um and then being like okay cool you know like um yeah. you know the 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 cool new york like a lot more long time new yorkers are at the show you know yeah. and then and then yeah just like there would be like fashion designers you know that we'd become friends with and they'd be like oh you want to play our fashion show and you know nice. so it's just like very oh new york, wow so know? it was more like collaborative compared to now like i feel now people are kind of isolated like fashion people are right i don't see like segues yeah 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 i mean back then yeah I, I think it was just like if you if you got along you just like connected and i mean i don't mm -hmm. yeah I, I i guess because i'm a little older now I, I i don't mingle amongst like uh so but like uh but it's yeah i don't know i don't know what it's like now i'm sort mm -hmm. of like but i feel like i'm maybe it's just like if you're if you're curious you'll you just like sort of like keep asking questions and like find these different people and you're like Mm -hmm. You know, I think I was always like very outgoing and like uh, I always was so curious about all these different people. Like if, even if it was somebody that I looked up to, even like with boredoms, like mm -hmm. starting to play with boredoms, it was like I was such a fan as a kid. And then like I, I just started like uh, I had been working at this. This is another one of the part time jobs I did, like, um, you know, as a as a younger adult, like working at I worked at Electro Harmonics and oh, nice. um and I would be, I was a pedal tester. So you'd test all the pedals like that get sent off, you know? Oh, nice. So in the morning you show up and the, and the boss, like, uh, you know, he's like this, like, like out of a movie, like character with like gray hair and a cigar <laughs> and a parrot, you know, like that, that was oh. in the studio all the time. And like, he's like. A real parrot. Yeah, a real oh, parrot. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, he'd be like, okay, like tests, you know, like the, like, the, like this pedal, like for, like like you know 10 boxes of these and those and then like uh test these like soft tech soft tech amps and you know like uh, so i'd be doing that and uh, but 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 i sort of talked my way into being like a like a pr like a person 
mm. um, like a, and I was like, okay, we should like, um, I have an idea for like promoting the, the brand more like let's sponsor bands and it was and like boredoms happened to be coming and they're playing CBGBs, like, which is like a, like a smaller venue, I feel like for, for them. But like, um, but they like at that, I was like, I'm going to get boredom sponsor. I told them the boss about boredoms and like, you know, I went, you know, that was my entry to just try to talk to them, you know? Whoa. And I remember like wearing this bug buzzcocks shirt and like, I like was like, Oh, cool. Buzzcocks shirt. <laughs> He's like, can I take a picture? And I was like, yes. Like you're like my idol. Whoa. Yeah, so like, um, so that I basically like, that's how, like, like, I was like, I talked to them about doing the sponsorship, mm -hmm. but then I left that job for a better paying job. Like before that happened, you know, I worked for this designer named Todd Oldham for a long mm -hmm. time um after that but like uh but yeah so basically, basically we kept in touch and then like yashimi had her other band like um oh i o o and they're they like we kept in she's was the one that was a little easier to keep in touch with so she invited one of my bands to play my i had a band called pixel 10 back then that i was doing at the same time as black dice and um oh the first the, the first iteration of pixel 10 uh, veronica vasica played bass in it oh really yeah. whoa yeah. she's a good bassist nice but yeah so we were like uh, you know that that sort of changed into just me and my friend devin flynn like together and then we added mika to sing but anyways at mm -hmm. the they asked us to, or oh I, we opened for oh I, oh and and at that show we also i also got like av terra and panda bear to play so that's before animal collective was animal collective and so like uh they played um and yeah just like like yeah that sort of it's just all organic like human you know sort of mm -hmm. like i did like some stuff with yoshimi in europe um improv shows and i think i solidified the trust there mm -hmm. in terms of being an improv player and um and then i did a a show with i a, like a, again maybe long, long story short but i had like a art like a he had an art exhibition in tokyo and i was like lucky to get invited to play like a solo set i had already started doing soft circle mm -hmm. um this is after after i had left black dice mm -hmm. and um and uh like a i from boredoms was gonna do a solo set and the guy from the gallery was like if he if he likes your set he'll improv with you but you you just won't know until like the day of Whoa. and so like i remember i like watching my whole sound check and then he walked over and he was like, okay, let's, um, let's play a set. And so that was my entry to get the trust of like, you know, these musicians that I looked up to or artists. And, um, so yeah. And then that, that eventually led to all the bow drum stuff happening. Well, so, yeah. yeah. It's like you manifested your dream and you met, it's, it's so powerful when you meet like the person who inspires you the most mm -hmm. and he they kind of like become like a mentor or like yeah. and it's like the best mentor you could have imagined yeah. so yeah that's so nice and actually so in 2007 you were the musical director mm -hmm. of the boardrooms like uh, uh municipal performances mm -hmm. can you talk about uh I don't, um i'm gonna play one video uh, yep. it's a 77 boa drum yep so okay. this was in this one is the later one. Oh yeah, oh, sorry. But uh, no, but this is how it progresses. But I think but, this yeah. yes. was... So yeah, this all came about because uh, basically like uh, there's this gallerist, uh, Kathy Grayson, mm -hmm. um, who works, used to work at uh, for Jeffrey Deitch at Deitch Projects. And a lot of the artists there, or a couple of the artists there were clearly influenced by Eyes uh, collage art. Um, and sort of music stuff as well but like she sort of noticed that and was like like i saw eyes work it's incredible can we do an exhibition about mm -hmm. boredoms and so i was talking i was sort of like the liaison for that conversation Whoa. and then you know like at that point they were putting out records with uh vice records in the u.s they're starting to do reissues and stuff it was basically reissues mm -hmm. um so like we were just trying to have this conversation about what kind of exhibition that would be. And like, you know, I had this sort of numerology idea, like for 77 drum kits to be arranged in, in an exhibition space. But basically Jeffrey Deitch like saw the price tag on having to fly the whole band over and all the rental equipment and all the, you know, 
And he was like, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not paying for all of that. Because I think it's basically like, because there's nothing to sell. It was mm -hmm. just an exhibition. And so, but we had already started talking about this. And I was talking to Adam Shore, who used to be at um, Vice Records then, um, and who clearly brought Boredoms into, you know, that, 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 that space to put out records. And we we're like, let's make something happen. Maybe it's a performance. And so I was like, what if, what if we did this? thing called 77 boa drum Whoa. and um like boa the snake yeah so oh. the, so the, if you see in this it's set up in a spiral um so the sen the, it, it sort of it's, it's harder to see here but like um but it actually spirals out from the center so the so the like and he had this whole story about seeing the snake one day and then like you know um seven like the number seven is like a a, a, a big uh, like a strong number in, in japanese uh, shinto history and like uh and so um so this like uh this 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 piece i mean he could talk forever about like why why all of these elements come together mm -hmm. uh, but my 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 sort of like position was just to be like the music uh like basically like the producer of the event Mm. And so, like the like, I mean, I, I was just like a band kid, and I was as I was telling you earlier, I was like 27 Seven. at the time. So I was just like, you know, I want to do something with the band. Like I'll, I'll organize all the drummers. I've been playing in these bands like all this time. Mm -hmm. Like I know tons of people. So it was all really like me on like a BlackBerry, like emailing and calling Whoa. people yeah i saved the blackberry because it's like just like so, such a good memory it's yeah. all cracked and stuff but it's like an old school blackberry nice. but like early you know early was device. it with the stylus um, it was one with the stylus oh no oh. it had like the little joystick it was like oh, yeah. this kind of almost square one but yeah but yeah so that like this all of this like uh was like uh just me just asking people who might want to do this thing with boredoms um mm -hmm. and you know it's sort of like it's sort of like a uh, i was gonna say spiraled but i was like don't make the joke i <laughs> made the joke anyway so, but like spiraled from there it was just like i like like basically i needed to get like a uh, you know, a, a real producer, you know, who could deal with like organizing, you know, something in a public space like this. And, mm -hmm. and so we partnered with like a uh, Jelly NYC, mm -hmm. um, which we're doing a lot of cool, like free, free to the public events. We wanted to make it a free event. And so like Molly Small um, from, from Jelly sort of like helped us like make this happen with like other producers that she um, was really well connected with and um and then yeah like uh this yeah so this this was like kind of like a really big diy event like, well, because uh you know in the beginning it was impossible to get the sponsorship they didn't really come through till the very end and you know all that really paid for was the production cost for it didn't pay for any of us to actually play it was just like getting the equipment there and that kind of thing and you know so it was yeah yeah it was it was a good time like so it's a, kind of like you were also a curator because you brought all of your connections and people right. trusted you you know right. all the musicians like i feel like this is something that sometimes people undervalue like right because you have music or art right. they don't see curator yeah as something that you also do sure yeah it's uh, yeah it's one of those yeah it's one of those things where you I mean, uh, it, like just talking about like survival in New York and like mm -hmm. like cre creativity having to become commerce at some point, you know, to be able to survive. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you hope that people uh, notice things without you having to be like, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's hard for people to because people like to define everything. Everything, yeah. You know, and so when you're hard to define. I mean, what the, the tool that I use is like, I don't tell everybody, like people that I meet everything. If I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm meeting a visual art curator uh, or like, you know, or yeah. some, you know, I just like, this is what I this do. This is what I do, yeah, yeah exactly. And then, and then if they seem to understand, then I'll be like, well, I've done this before, or like I do the, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I mean, it's all a ways to just like, you know, try to get more, more projects like to, to manifest. Mm -hmm. I think I'm somebody like, collage is like a really good sort of like example of why mm -hmm. like or how i create is like finding like a seed for me 
um, is, is, is the basis of a lot of like, sort of like how, how my ideas come from. If I see something that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know what it's sparking something in my mind. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's connecting to some past memory. Like how, how does this relate to some, like, you know, I just always trying to, you know, like, so if I, if I meet like a producer for a music event, I'll be like, what, you know, I'll come up with an idea on the spot and be like, what if there is this, this could happen. And then, and then, you know, that manifests into something that actually happens. And that's sort of like a big part of how my creativity works. And I, I, yeah. So nice. Yeah. When you said collage, I wanted to bring this photo Yeah. because it's kind of uh, it's exactly what you said. Like also maybe it's rooted in your childhood, like right. trying to like, you know, you take, like create kind of like a world out of all the questions that mm. maybe you're going through or because you're also like being mixed, like being half Japanese mm. and um, uh, Indian Myanmar, yeah. Burmese, like it's something like, like, uh, do you feel like it's hard for you to belong to one culture? Like you feel kind of like always seeking like belonging or something absolutely that's like the like such a a big part of like my i i remember just like very specific memories of you know childhood of being like i don't fit into any of this so f this Mm. because it's just like i don't nobody wants me in 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 the group you know Mm -hmm. like it even in like in like memories of being in san diego as a kid you know like a like I was half Japanese. I mean, the Japanese community, like once you're in America, it's a little easier, you know, like, uh, you know, there's there's people who, the, the Asian people who want to just like assimilate. And then there's the ones who want to, who have plans to move back. And, you know, there's somewhere in between, like we were living, but, you know, at school, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do what the white kids do. They don't want to be mm-hmm. like, they're, they're not like r- relatable. And they, they there's like a, a like a, there was just like this, I was always outside, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, when I moved back to Japan, the same thing, like it was like, like a, you know, I was half, so I could never, you know, and I had gone through my father's death. So Whoa. I was just like really contemplative kid. I was like, what's life, you know, mm-hmm. like this is like, we're all, why are we doing this? You know, mm-hmm. like, and so I would want to have these deeper conversations, but nobody had gone through that. Like mm-hmm. I dad passed when I was pretty young. So like most people don't experience that. And like, the jealousy of like, you know, seeing people with their fathers, like building mm. skateboard ramps or whatever, you know, and I was like, I can't have that. Um, and so, you know, like the, that I'm outside was always there, you know, so that's like, um, and you know, like now even, you know, like, a you know, I have like a, like, cult, I feel culturally Muslim. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I, but I, I don't know the cult, I don't know the religion and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I didn't grow up with the traditions, you mm-hmm. know, so. I grew up more with the traditions of, of in Japan, kind of just out of circumstance, right? So like, because of, you know, being in Japan and sort of like having to sort of fit in and trying to fit in and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's parts that, you know, like, and so if I, you know, people hear my, my name, they immediately are like, are you Arabic? Are you, you know, um, Muslim? And so I just go back and forth with that conversation. And I, you know, I, I can't, don't feel accepted by that that side of my you know background either so that is a a big point of like what i what i create and like i think my sort of like um i like how i see in i mean i'm bringing in sort of my 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 experience too so but it's like a objective sort of like trying to be objective about like how how all these different things come into your mind or into your life and how they how they again i guess for creative people like get to get expressed mm. you know um and i love that every all these different people have these little all these very specific life experiences that make them tell these little stories through their creativity you know mm-hmm. and so yeah i mean that's i yeah i mean i, I just try to sort of like emphasize that through my work i guess mm-hmm. and speaking of which like i have one of your drawing and yeah, I'm really interested in because it, it feels like you're I don't know, I don't know if this is right, but are you like very interested in the mind like how our thoughts are connected like not um you, I'm curious like um what do you think of 
rhythms, like music, rhythms, patterns. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to yeah. find a, a link in between all of this, but yeah. also like how your brain mm. is wired mm. and how that manifests through like your drawings or mural paintings or mm. installations or mm. music compositions. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, all of it is like, a, like life has a rhythm, right? Like mm -hmm. and everybody had like, and when you live in a city, you just see all the rhythms like in the streets and the, you know, lights changing or the, you know, the music you hear on the street and the sound of the subway and everything. And, and like, I, with my with my work, I think I just like, uh, I mean, even in high school, I had like a, you know, meditation practice, like, uh, that wasn't, you know, that was sort of more like, a you know, it wasn't like a, like what I sort of like, uh, do now, which is, I mean, I, I, I don't do it daily, but I learned Vipassana and, and, and sort of like use that as a jump off point a lot, but basically like a lot of like things I feel like come in a vision of mm -hmm. a momentary image in my mind. And I find that this like thoughts have rhythm too. And, and so I'm, and everything yeah so like i guess i'm clearly like very rhythmically focused but i try to sort of like with with the these like sort of early drawing stuff that i was doing was trying to show how how your the flow of thoughts would melt into each other and it was just Whoa. like a visualization of it you know this one is has more of like a slightly figurative because it has like a wave theme mm -hmm. to it and like a, a lot of the other patterns like kind of just came like i would just see them in my head and then, and then try to draw them um, um so there's like this yeah i think like all of all of the things that you said like all, all totally connect because because i try to like like the second you see an image in your mind mm -hmm. like or, or you see something on the street see an orange and mm -hmm. then you're like reminded of the time that your mother gave gave you an orange yeah and then, then it reminds you of the color of the shirt that she was wearing and that color reminds you of something you know Whoa. and so that's like constantly happening in like such an incredibly short amount of time mm -hmm. and i think that's just so fascinating so a lot of like what i try to express like in the in the just i guess everywhere um is is the fascination of of, of that like the the beauty of the container that is like one human mm -hmm. you know like i think that's just there's like so much depth. Like I think about it all the time. I jump on the subway, mm -hmm. you're going to do whatever. And you think about every single person's life and Whoa. how, how crazy it, it how, how many things that, that are all centered around them, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, or, or, you know, the, the world is you know, like always moving around all these really interesting stories, you know, yeah. these people that are these vessels, you know, uh, we're only here for this certain amount of time. And we're like, we're just trying to figure out like what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it and yeah. like how to survive and how to feel joy and how to deal with pain. And, you know, so I just like, like my, <laughs> my fascination yeah. is like that and just trying to, trying to express it in my own way. And hopefully it's like interesting enough for people to like, want to, want to feel it, you know? Yeah. And also like on social media, on your Instagram, like, Sometimes you post a lot of photos of like everyday life or like things you find like yeah. outside. And yeah. it, it's so nice. It's like you, it's like a continuity, like you have a right. flow of expression and it's not tied to one medium. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know why I, I was thinking about, you know, rhythms. Yeah. As like, you know, when you're a baby and your mom yeah, yeah. does that. Yeah. And maybe, maybe that's why you're. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I yeah, no, I thought I thought about that a yeah. lot because, like, um, you know, when when before Ima was born, like, uh, like you know, like the kid listens to the mother's heartbeat and this severe, like, intense amount of white noise in the womb. You Whoa. know, so like when they come out, you, you have a white noise machine to sort of like like make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. and it's like such a trippy thing to think about, you know, where you're like in this in this other human's body like you know growing and you're hearing and feeling all these things and Whoa. um but yeah i just like trip out on 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 that kind of stuff and yeah i think like the the yeah and like with the visual stuff i mm -hmm. like one 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 what? thing i always like talking about is like when you're looking at a, a 
anything, your eye goes from like a corner to another corner and it goes back and you then you're creating movement within your body, you mm-hmm. know, and that's a rhythm. And there's like a beauty and like a, I, I've, I've gotten more interested in moving image stuff and trying to learn how to do it um, better. But like, a, you know, I liked trying to make these things that were still that would when you look at it, you create this movement, you know, um, uh. within the, the viewer's body um, or the person experiencing it. And I, I, I that, that was one thing that I really liked about this stuff. And there, again, and also like with the murals, like when I was doing these more in like a really uh, intricate drawings. The, it was definitely like influenced by you know like a like a mandala like a like a sand sand mandala like mm-hmm. drawings like the like to talk about the temporariness like mm-hmm. to put all this effort into something mm-hmm. that will go away because that's what life is you know mm-hmm. like um so that was like a, a big part of like really taking a lot of time on these things and then having them painted over mm-hmm. and like not being attached to them And you also experimented with sculpture. I'm uh, not experimented, but you used sculpture as yeah. well. Yeah. So And what is this one? This one was like a, it was for a, a really small group show, but I, I had this sort of like, I, I definitely have a tendency to personify like uh, things in nature or even, you know, urban environments. And uh, I would sort of see it a lot. Like I started thinking about it a lot more when when I was really into the, in my photography phase and mm. I'd see like a construction site with like a, with a field of, you know, like a, like flowers, like put on the side as like a, you know, to, to get rid of the eyesore. But then those images would just start speaking to me, you know, like, or I would oh. give it a voice. It'd be like, I'm just actually lonely, you know, like sitting on this wall, you know, like, and, and so I would start doing that with like, um, with with things so i had this opportunity i found this like um this this plastic rock thing um actually at the space that i ended up like exhibiting but it was used for you know something else and i cut it into a, i cut it in half and i wanted it to sort of like reflect a life of like a i, I originally wanted to have like a, a voice that was sort of like a, a monologue um wow. i ended up not being able to figure out how to do that in the in the time that I had to get ready for the show, but I decided to sort of like give it life by painting it fluorescent on the inside and lighting it from inside. And then it would be give sort of like this light. And I had like a smoke machine um, that was sort of emit. So I was trying to sort of give it, give it like this mystified life, like, you know, like a, a lot of, I think cultures, um, animistic, uh, like uh, r- r- religions or beliefs sort of like give, give like uh you know things in nature yeah like, uh, gods and you know like personalities and mm-hmm. so i was sort of trying to give this rock a sort of like a you know it like make it like this special object but i like that it's this fake rock you know like mm. the, the part of it is that it's this synthetic thing made by humans like to cover up u- ugly things it was one of these like uh mm-hmm. rocks like that you you cover like a, you know, like a, a giant, like electrical, like box, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like they cover them with these giant rocks sometimes or fake things, you know, yeah. like fake nature things. Oh. So I always like that. I think it's like having grown up in cities, like uh, when nature comes into the city, it always seems like the, the, the most outsider thing, you know, it's mm. like the sad, the, like the trees that, you know, make it livable, but they still are like, you know, like surrounded by all this concrete you know and they're like trying to they're living but you know it's like it seems like such an unfriendly yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) so like i think i think about that a lot like as like you know this always sort of like being the outsider from different cultures and stuff um Mm -hmm. and i think like to to be fair to all, all all different people and all different cultures like everybody i think feels that way because we are We mm-hmm. are the single singular vessel mm-hmm. that is the center of our lives throughout yeah. the lifetime. So then, so then you know you're always going to feel outside because you are. We nobody mm-hmm. dies with another person. Like mm-hmm. like you could die side by side, but you are dying alone. Alone. So like it's like uh, so I think about that a lot too. But so like, how does it feel like now that you're you have Ima that your father like. Uh, Do you feel like those questions that you you had your whole life are answered a little bit or do you still feel like um do you feel more at ease now that like you created 
Right. Uh, like your own vessel, even though like we're right. all. Yeah, I mean, just well, the the thing that I feel more satisfied about is just that, like, I have like a really pure love for my child and my family, mm -hmm. and that that gave this satisfaction that I did not know could exist. You know, like the the there. You know, when you're younger, there is a you know the the ego does drive sort of like you know like I want to get out there and like I hope people like my stuff and all this stuff, but mm -hmm. like um. But now that I have like a happy family, I'm like, I don't need, I don't need any of it. <laughs> yeah. So like, why am I on the stage? Yeah. You know, like, cause I don't really, I don't care about like getting accolade. Yeah. You know, I do it because I'm good at it. I yeah. think like, and, um, and I think I like, a, it's like a, you know, it's just part of how to, how to make a living. I mean, I, I enjoy mm -hmm. it. Like I enjoy pushing myself, but mm -hmm. most of the time, yeah, I just played a show yesterday. I was thinking about it. Yeah. Cause, cause after the show, I was like, I could have played better. I was like good in this part. No, my body felt like a not not strong enough in this part. And I, you know, I'm just constantly critiquing, critiquing you know. Yeah. And so, and I do kind of like get annoyed when people critique their own shows right after they're performed. Because I'm just like just a little, you, know, <laughs> you know. But I was doing that internally, and yeah. um, but I think like uh like so it's just an interesting thing to be like a like somebody who's like like especially now we're talking about the sort of negative sides of social media like mm -hmm. it's just like there's just always this thing to sell everything that you yeah. you're doing and it's exhausting yeah. you know and nobody really wants to like a uh, you know I mean there are people who really do need the like dopamine like so severely that they'll mm -hmm. just do it for that but like people who really create like usually just are creating because they really they need love to, it. yeah they yeah. love it they, they they can't help but try to they're constantly trying to figure out a better way to express and mm -hmm. a new idea to bring in and you know you're trying to this is like a constant like you know struggle to try to figure out like how to communicate like these like these yeah these abstract these things that could be taken in many different ways and mm -hmm. but like um but it, it can it can get frustrating when you when when you're when you want to just like the work i mean this is kind of cliche but for the work to speak for mm -hmm. itself or something but but you have to just sell it that's like the only you have to just have people like try to get people interested and mm -hmm. it's exhausting that's so hard yeah, yeah actually we had uh, an episode with um this friend i see if he's a um artist and mm -hmm. uh, he had like a very amazing show but then the pressure of having to sell your art artworks yeah is so like hard on yeah i cannot imagine having yeah. to go through that and especially when you dedicate your life to this practice and it's your career yeah and then it's like there's no yeah way back like yeah you have to but i'm curious about like your creative process at the moment like what um what's your creative process in visual art mm -hmm. and uh, in music mm -hmm. I think it really comes like nowadays I feel like it comes from a an idea instead of I mean sometimes it's it's just playing around mm -hmm. with materials whether it's sound materials or or something I find like a sample or something and like what idea that brings me like I always like joke about with, with my wife about how I'm like the slowest reader ever because I just get so inspired by the smallest thing you yeah. know I read a sentence and be like wow and then I'll just like want to make work about that one sentence, you know, so, but that's kind of like how I am just like out and out, out in the world. I'll just like see something. And as you're saying, like with the Instagram stuff, like in terms of just like what I see that inspires me, that's just like what, you know, I'd, I'll just be so inspired by like some beauty and like a small thing, but with like, mm -hmm. you know, so there's a lot of process like that, that, that sort of leads to like, or often leads to the idea because like you're trying to hash out or at least for me like trying to hash out what it is that you're interested in that mm -hmm. that why did that object inspire you or why did that sample inspire you but there's always some like something way more interesting because if you keep sort of like going back you know in the wires in your in your brain and the, the life experiences there's like a a deeper connection to something in your past because of course mm -hmm. you're if you're reacting in the moment to something then you're then you're there's a reason you've learned something about about that you know like um whether it's literally like how the light is hitting that that object or or like that you know that type of object had a meaning to you in your past mm -hmm. and um and so like uh, yeah i guess it's 
like but uh, like yeah recently i've sort of noticed like that i'm trying to i'm in a sort of like a a discover rediscovery phase of like okay i've done x amount of stuff in in my life and um creatively and then you know i do you know commercial work like uh, or commissioned work to make a living and you know um again i sort of like don't fit exactly in the mold you know because i don't want to mm -hmm. just do commercial work mm -hmm. and you know or, or like a commission work and do illustration i want to have you know like uh be able to make fine art pieces and i want to be able to do more sound sound pieces um in in spaces that maybe show visual work and and try to meld meld the the sound work the performance work more with the with the visual work mm. that's like the thing that's kind of been missing the whole time because i always sort of would think about it separately mm. like the music is music and mm -hmm. it could be performed in a you know in a space but i wouldn't I was sort of treating it like more like a, a traditional musical experience. Mm. Um, so, I mean, you know, the experience of seeing like a performance is is linear uh, is is usually linear. Mm -hmm. So I think I want to just sort of like break out of that. So I'm thinking about ideas about that and you know how to sort of bring in visual stuff that really that actually connects because mm -hmm. it's so easy to make like a soundtrack to a visual thing that just like yeah if it doesn't really you know if the meaning is like you know not fully you know worked out it just can come across as just not not fully fully baked and yeah. so because it's, it's such a big step i'm trying to think about it seriously and mm -hmm. or like really make the 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 all the all the the i guess the glue like to in between the materials to really work you know it has to has to feel complete when you when you experience it yeah. so yeah so like right now what are your inspirations like um musically and uh, sound or visual yeah i mean i guess like uh, like they they kind of go back always to the same things that i was always into which is like i guess folk music from all all over the world meets like um you know extreme like extreme music like i'm still like a huge death metal fan and like uh mm -hmm. i still love techno and like a, like left field techno and like i guess like bass music and you know that kind of stuff like things that have a impact like a, a visceral that give you a visceral reaction mm -hmm. but then i like you know like uh always having like segues of of like connecting you know things that have like a less sort of like rhythmic element you know like a, mm. a abstract texture that connects it like mm. it's kind of like thinking about chapters i guess mm -hmm. like um in a book or or in a play or something like that just to have vignettes that connect to each other in a good way mm -hmm. or interesting way so um i guess like that those so i'm 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 going back to looking at what what inspires me like the mm -hmm. the like uh and like uh, i'm i'm trying to be objective um i think like the like one thing that like uh i was taking like this like online course like uh sarah bell reed uh this modular sense person like um was doing and i learned like a uh, it was just a really good class she's a really good teacher but like um but like uh i'm still constantly going back and forth on that but like there's like a you know talk about like a like a deep listening and so oh, i feel nice. like uh like i was just thinking about like that um i i just think about that with every single thing that i do now so i do that like with anything mm -hmm. i'm like this this track bangs or like Whoa. oh this, <laughs> this this like makes me head bang or whatever yeah and like what is it that's that that works for me that like because mm -hmm. there's like oh you know what if you're like as you as a dj you always like when you have to choose quickly you're sort of just like trying to get the vibe right you're yeah. like okay okay this one yeah this one's better <laughs> oh this one's slightly yeah. better okay i'll use this one because it's like mm -hmm. you know if it's somebody's album there's going to be a lot of good stuff you just you know you just have to sort of like figure out what's gonna work for work you for the, yeah. or like the specific thing you're gonna try to curate for right yeah so like i like i, I just do the the deep listening like um stuff and see what works and like what like if it's like oh this specific rhythm there's something about this there's something that's swinging in this thing and it, it nice. could be like you know like i feel like i definitely like delve more into arabic music again like recently and like nice. um and just like hearing like how the how just like the, yeah just 
how all these different things are locking in and mm -hmm. um and yeah wanting to understand more like i'm my my sort of south asian background is like a gujarat indian so like i, mm. I was like trying to understand like look up things about like you know maybe rhythms that were used instruments that are used sounds nice. that were used and what you know what 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 i could sort of like you know like reference and like same with sort of japanese culture one cool thing like um is like a like a, as being a parent is like a, a I started getting, or we were able to get Ima into like a Japanese taiko drumming class. Oh yeah, I saw yeah. video, nice. And so that's been cool because like I didn't really think about like, you know, I guess maybe my mind is pretty westernized in this way, but like drumming, dr drumming pieces being songs because they just call them songs in class. So they're like, you want to do this song or that song? Just fully just percussion. Yeah. And so I've been thinking about it and like also like the, the theatrics that come with like, you know, this like, wadaiko drumming like um because it's like you know it's a theater piece you know you're you have like the like the rhythm is like even in the movement you know they're like okay you go ha, ha, you know <laughs> that's a count you know that's and then that's a symbol to, like a or yeah like a a marker for like okay you go down from here you know and like and you move this way you know um and so i've just been thinking about like yeah how to i'm just in a observation and like you know like testing sort of zone right now like mm -hmm. and like learning like trying to learn you know different programs and I've, i'm just nice. like really kind of just like sampling all these things and hopefully i'll get to a point where i'm like okay i'm gonna it's just time like, to, yeah yeah just like finish something yeah 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 it's so important to have those moments of reflections and um yeah i'm really interested like at the moment like are you like do you incorporate new technologies in your creative process mm -hmm. or are you interested oh absolutely I, i'm like i think it's just like the I've, I've never been like super good at like learning the computer programs but i do i mean i'm 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 okay at it, it but mm -hmm. it takes time you mm -hmm. know i'm not as fast as like maybe people who are like grew up with 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 the computer in front of them all the time but mm -hmm. i'm i'm I always love what people do with touch designer and I wish I, I, I could, oh, I could learn. Yeah. It's just like everything I see people do with that. I'm just like, that looks amazing. And yeah. I, I, I know that it's like the perfect conduit for mixing the tech, like the technology ideas with like, with the visual and the audio, yeah. you know, it's just like a clearly the right, the right tool, but I'm not a programmer. And I don't know if I have an, enough life left in me, you know, like time wise to become like a master at learning that program. But like, I like, you know, like I, I want to learn Blender and I'm learning After Effects right now. And oh, nice. I'm, and I'm, you know, le learning the modular synth like stuff and how to connect it with, you know, like, you know, want to use CV tools in Ableton and, you know, like, yeah. like I want to be able to connect like the, you know, figure out how to make like visual stuff that could be sort of like, you know, maybe it's simple triggering, but I'd rather it be something more interesting where it's synthesized somehow, you know, like mm -hmm. um, from the live action that's happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I, I love what you all are doing, you know, with with all of, all of the the visual mm -hmm. stuff. And I think I, I, I really like a, I, I'm fascinated by how you're able to do like good good team effort jo like projects and stuff you know oh, thank you <laughs> i want to get back into like like collaborating with more people it's like a family life can definitely kind of suck you into like okay i have to i can only have x amount of time to to get ideas out and you know mm. uh, before i have more time to be social yeah. um and i i i think i'm naturally a pretty social person but it's just harder with time and like, you know, like uh, having enough like energy to be able to get up with your kid and make sure that their their lunch is packed and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And then, you know, get it, then it's a short day because they have to get out of school and you got to deal with that. And I, I got to teach my kid Japanese and make sure he Whoa. does his homework and, you know, and yeah. then there's after school activities and all this stuff. And then I got a band and, you know, it's just like, uh, but, but Damn, well, yeah how do you do with the band and your own work like your solo work and your uh yeah how do you manage the funny thing with like uh, managing i i get like uh is that it's just whatever needs to get done the soonest it's all just scheduling 
Um, so the, those things like just like dictate what gets done. And I think that's, you know, it, it, uh, it's, it's not always ideal because like, you know, like with, when you're in the process of creating, I feel like you're, you really have to spend time with that murky, that murky zone of mm-hmm. just like, I don't know if this is anything mm-hmm. or like, you know, this is garbage or this is, this is okay. I'm going to spend more time. And then you hit a block and you're like, oh, this is garbage, but I'm going to still push. And then you get mm-hmm. to somewhere beautiful. Mm-hmm. And that takes like a, you know, a decent amount of time of really concentrating, you know? Mm-hmm. So that, that like a getting to that point of having that amount of time is harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that like life like a you know the life that i chose to be a parent like a it it's it's set gives me a set amount of time so now then i have to be like okay it's on mm-hmm. you gotta concentrate yeah and um, maybe that I, I feel like that that's really good because it's like uh when we were in school and we wouldn't care mm-hmm. but like when you have that uh you're like okay time is precious then uh, we're more efficient to yeah. it like we're more predictive and everything is more meaningful like mm-hmm. everything is taught yeah you can make like immediate uh, decisions, you know, like because you have to. Like mm-hmm. that, like uh, that's another thing I was thinking about just today because I took like a like I'm I'm finally at, I'm at 47. I'm trying to get my driver's license very first time, and so I'm uh, mm-hmm. I was thinking about just quick decisions because like it's just I've been terrified of driving um, because I waited this long, and you know just thinking about like uh, like just the you know, being in this thing that could, you know, destroy somebody else's life or get, get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Like, but like I was thinking of just like such quick choices that you have to make, you know, in these (laughs) like really high, high stress moments. And, and, but like, even like, um, trying to choose the photos for to send because i was like oh i don't have much time and i was like okay you gotta just be decisive okay that one okay that yeah. one, that one. <laughs> they scan that okay that worked okay like you know and just like but, sometimes like the lack of time does kind of help like yeah. uh, setting up your own deadlines you know in your head yeah but honestly thank you for being here because yesterday you had this show and tomorrow you have a no per- like a medical yeah a thing and uh yeah really we really appreciate it oh no it's, yeah. it's fun i mean as you can tell like i like to talk but like um but yeah like uh but yeah not to be too mysterious about the 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 medical thing i'm getting my first colonoscopy because i am in my 40s so um yeah but yeah like uh yeah no it's it's always fun to talk and like yeah. is it uh thank you but is it like with the medical stuff is it something that like you you know like you you're lazy about and then you have to do it the last minute or are you stressed about it like i'm not really stressed about it like uh yeah my dad died of stomach cancer so i did like sort of deal with like intestinal like like fears of like what could happen um and so i had a endoscopy i think it's called where they yeah and that's like a, a milder thing this one's a little more you know involved but like um but it's just like a safety safety yeah. measure. I'm I I feel like I'm a pretty healthy person in terms of like what I eat. It's not like I have like crazy, mm-hmm. terrible diet or you know I'm like you know I and I you know I do like as I was telling you before I do this fasting stuff. Cause mm-hmm. It's kind of like a I heard that it's like a good like a like a like a thing to fight cancer off. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw an interview oh, yeah. yeah about it and. Actually, a guy was, uh, he, I think he had terminal cancer and everyone told him, oh, you're going to die. You have two months. Mm-hmm. And he started fasting yeah. and he, yeah, he's, he's healthy now. Yeah, yeah. He's alive. It's yeah, been yeah. three years. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing is like uh, when I was sort of like looking at this, like a, cause a, like a, like a, a, a friend was telling me about, you know, it helps like your gut, like rebuild. It's like, uh, you know, the good the good stuff like mm-hmm. a, like a then I, then i looked at you know if you're in your 40s like what do you do and you know you're supposed to do like longer periods of time from what i read mm-hmm. and that it you know like basically it gives your liver a break for a really, like much longer time for to not be processing the food mm-hmm. that, that it's taking in so then it can notice everything else and fix it and mm-hmm. get rid of the bad stuff and so i was like oh that totally makes sense yeah and it's easy for like when i did the when I first like learned Vipassana meditation, like it was like, I learned that I physically and mentally learned that like the, the sensation of hunger is not something you need to just like immediately like smash, mm-hmm. you know, like before, 
I feel like you'd get hungry and be like, oh, I'm so, uh, I hate this feeling. But yeah. then I'd just be like, oh, I'm just hungry. Yeah. And then, so then I, like when I started this like fasting now, or like, you know, like a, like in, in my forties, I was like, okay, like a, I can, I can deal with it. I'm just like objective about it. Eventually after like, you know, like 20 hours, I'm like, definitely, <laughs> you know, I definitely want to eat something, yeah. you know, I'd be like trying to make my kid food. And I'm like, damn, oh, that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, so yeah. difficult. Uh, yeah. I I feel you and uh, yeah, also like in in the religion, like in Islam, like yeah. with Ramadan, it's like something. Mm -hmm. But then it's like I feel like with religion, usually people break the fast together. Right. So there is also that yeah, cultural aspect. That's nice. Yeah. That is very nice. So when you do it on your own, it's just it's not the same. So. Yeah. We should do a friends Ramadan. Yeah, maybe that'd we should be cool do yeah. with like different friends with, and different foods. Yeah, and, that'd uh, be cool. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, because that yeah that's a, yeah that, those are the things that like, you know I want to you know like I just culture I think get, and and you know like traditions like just get smashed so yeah. much you know like uh and and it's it's sad because it's like people are like oh you know like religion you know we're not our religion or you know but it's like yeah, but, but the it, cultural aspects yeah. i think we should even like if we don't believe in a religion mm -hmm. i think the culture is so special and yeah. unique yeah and yeah you're right it's it's good to like preserve them yeah uh, and also fasting is good for us so i yeah. think it's a good reminder totally. to like go through that feeling because it's all in your head yeah um yeah. but yeah i'm um i think oh wow an hour 37 <laughs> uh yeah th this was fun but before um we stop the podcast can you the show can you do you have uh, anything uh coming up or any upcoming projects or shows you have a show at the lot r radio yeah i do the lot radio show like once a month on tuesdays um um 10 to 10 p.m. to midnight and then yeah mm -hmm. my van kill alters is you know off and on touring we're trying to figure out the rest of the year for touring and stuff and we're working on a new album like maybe some singles and then an album and then nice. yeah i'm like trying to i have like a performance um at ps1 coming up nice. um on the 24th of february that's like a free to the public thing Oh, nice. that's like a solo improv set with the drums and the drum sensor thing that i've been doing and uh yeah i guess it's just like working on trying to get some like new work done like uh both in the 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 visual and the audio like world but maybe like trying to figure out if i could get something that i feel like so, like confident about like it, that connects them all and mm -hmm. where i could show it so yeah i mean there's there's always like yeah, there's there's always something like um, I'm speaking at like a like a sort of art and uh, like design thing in Belgium oh, nice. coming up in in September. Um, I think it's called Us by Night, mm -hmm. and um, so that will be cool. So yeah, I think it's just you know just seeing how seeing how the year goes. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be going to Japan with the family. I usually go back to see my mother. Okay. Um, and then I set up gigs for it. Like, so in July, I'll be in, in Japan with, with my family. And then I'll, I usually set up some DJ gigs and oh, some nice. live shows. And that's always fun. Especially now in Japan, I feel like there is like a very unique energy in music. Mm -hmm. And a lot of like young kids doing crazy stuff. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, it's very inspiring to, yeah. to be there and be in music. Yeah, yeah. And seeing that happen. Totally. Because here it's like, I don't know... Like, what do you think of, um, like, have you been inspired lately? Like when you go to shows here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, like, uh, like one thing that I, I like, uh, maybe is a blessing is that, you know, like the audience for Kill Alters is pretty young. Yeah. So we play with a lot of like younger acts and then the kids are younger too. So like, so it, like I always, I'm always trying to just hear something that I, I like and, Mm -hmm. um there's always it's true yeah. there's always a lot it's just like um whether or not i could I, I wish i could you know hang out with everybody and like see what their what the inspiration is mm -hmm. you know like uh i miss the, the the human aspect but i just like for for my just for my 
family life, it's harder to just be out and just hanging out. But mm -hmm. like, um, but I feel like I'm like constantly inspired and, you know, there's, I, I do want to sort of like learn how to sort of, I guess, or, or be able to connect with people who do like, like technology based stuff or not, mm -hmm. not really, like use technology in a way that I, I admire and I, I don't, I, I can't do just by myself. I want to yeah. be able to, I do want to collaborate again more with people. I've yeah. been trying to like do more improv sets or practice with, or at least like jam with people again. And that's mm -hmm. been like amazing, like um, mm -hmm. to be able to, or, and, and try to find like, you know, like just try like, okay, Asian community, like let's like jam and see what happens there. Like mm -hmm. then I'd love to, you know, like, like try to, improv with people who come from you know like the uh, you know south asian like arabic like mm -hmm. you know like and see what that that what yeah. happens from that and you know because everybody brings these different cultural elements and, and you know like it's so true even if it's not through me like the sound like maybe through the, the thinking or like yeah, when that you, too. yeah yeah i've had some yeah. really nice like like hangouts with like you know like you know more eastern asian community like you know just everybody talking about like microaggressions like towards asians or like you know like mm -hmm. the same on like you know the to sort of like a like a south asian or like a arabic side like my palestinian friends like meeting up and talking about you know like what their past like you know like knowing the history of what's going on or like going on for a long time and having people sort of like finally hear their voice and 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 also just like how their parents like moved moved mm -hmm. to america or you know or didn't or you know like a you know just how this the stance that they have as as humans you know um um where where a lot of stuff has been taken from them and like you know and then like trying to assim assimilate to you know being in america a lot of all these all of us have you know whether you speak the language that your you know your parents grew up speaking or not if you are uh, like if you have like moved to another country mm -hmm. and you're trying to fit in like whether you you know you can or not it's just like you kind of will never fully become like the you know the i mean i guess we're talking about like you know white culture yeah. like yeah. or you know like this sort of like you know these countries that have been built on you know other people's blood mm. but like uh, you know it's it, it, there you know there's pros and cons to all of these different environments and mm -hmm. like you know it's it's complicated but it's like uh you know you like we it, i think it's a good place for us to you know as as sort of like these people who are like this planet that's constantly migrating because of all this other conflict happening in the world mm -hmm. when you find a place that your family settles in you have to deal with the you know whatever you're born into and that stuff is fascinating so why don't we just try to make something beautiful happen that actually showcases mm -hmm. how incredible different cultures are yeah, instead of exactly. being like i don't get it yeah yeah <laughs> i hate it yeah you know it's so true and also our, our lifetime is short so why what like we need to just and global warming and all the earthquake you know like there are yeah. so many things we need to deal with why are we adding this division yeah it's yeah it's ridiculous it's such a waste of energy yeah i'm always just like if you could just if we could just all get along to a certain degree like we're yeah. always all all even singularly so different like yeah. we have to be able to like you know i mean it's just humans seem to want to just like want to exit the planet like and, mm -hmm. and become like a, a micro part of like the history <laughs> of the planet you know like um yeah. but yeah I, I i but there's so much potential to just be good to each other yeah know? exactly so yeah but yeah thank you so much Isha. thank you <laughs> this was good, fun. good conversation yeah great conversation and i'll uh, make sure to include uh, all of the links that you mentioned in your uh ps1 show coming up yeah the, you said the 20 Twenty fourth, I think. So it's next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. next week! Yeah. Wow. I, is it um, Friday on Friday? It's a uh, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, okay. Friday is the opening. Yeah. Opening. Yeah. Yeah. The Rick Ritz, uh piece. It's yeah. Like, yeah. We we were just thinking about about going there, so oh, I don't nice. know. Oh, okay, yeah. we'll talk about that. Yeah. Off but camera. thank you so much. Bye. All right. <laughs>